What are sample rate and bit depth? If you've worked at all with digital audio, whether in a computer or in a hardware device, then you've probably seen the terms sample rate and bit depth. Sample rate and bit depth can impact many aspects of digital audio, from the overall audio quality, to the amount of storage space a digital audio file might require, to how much computer horsepower is required to process a file or signal, and more. Sample rate and bit depth are two distinctly different things, but they work in concert to allow for digital audio recording, playback, and processing to basically work. Now, I'll warn you in advance that discussions of sample rate and bit depth can get very deep very quickly, because there are a lot of subtle and very technical aspects to it. But we'll try to keep this as straight ahead as possible for this discussion. In fact, I'll start things off with the most basic definitions. For our purposes, a sample is a measurement of an audio signal. The sample rate is how many times per second these measurements, or samples, are taken of an audio signal. This determines the maximum frequency that can be represented. Bit depth is the resolution for the samples. This determines the dynamic range of the digital capture. So that's it. If you're looking for a quick and dirty definition of sample rate and bit depth, there you have it. And if that's all you need, then feel free to stop this video and go get a sandwich or some cookies or crackers or something. But for those who don't need a snack and wanna dig in just a little deeper, let's go back to our definition of a sample. A sample is a single measurement of the level of an audio signal. It's a snapshot, an instant in time that measures the audio signal at one single point, sort of like taking a photo. Now, while a single photo of a visual scene works fine, a single snapshot of an audio signal doesn't give us much, since the audio signal continues as a stream through time. For this reason, we need to take a steady stream of samples of the digital audio signal if we want to be able to store that signal digitally and play it back. To continue our metaphor, it's more like recording a video instead of taking a photo. The speed at which the stream of samples are taken is the sample rate, literally the number of samples taken in a second. Now, there are a lot of misconceptions out there as to what sample rate does and represents when it comes to audio capture and playback. But ultimately, a sample does just one thing. It measures the level of the audio signal. And the sample rate determines just one thing, the highest frequency that can be represented by the digital audio stream. It all goes back to the development of the Nyquist-Shannon theorem back in the 1940s. At its simplest, this theorem states that any audio waveform can be fully reproduced with all the necessary amplitude, frequency, and phase information completely intact as long as there are at least two samples captured per waveform cycle. As a aside here, you might hear some people argue with some aspect or other of the Nyquist-Shannon theorem. But an important distinction is that this is actually a theorem, meaning that it can be proven using a chain of reasoning. This is different from a theory, which is an idea or proposition that has yet to be proven. So given the Nyquist-Shannon theorem is a theorem and can be proven, we can consider it fact. Anyway, back to our topic here. This all means that the sample rate needs to be at least twice as fast as the highest frequency we want to capture and reproduce. This is called the Nyquist frequency and translates to half the sample rate. Frequencies below the Nyquist frequency will be accurately represented. Frequencies above the Nyquist frequency, which again is half the sample rate, will not be accurately represented and will show up as what is called aliasing. So to capture a frequency of 20 kilohertz, which is generally regarded as the upper limit of human hearing, we'd need a sample rate of at least 40 kilohertz. A sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz, as on compact discs and other formats, gives us a frequency response up to 22.05 kilohertz. The 48 kilohertz sample rate often used with video gets us up to 24 kilohertz with audio frequencies. 96 kilohertz takes us to 48 kilohertz for the audio, and 192 kilohertz gets us up to 96 kilohertz audio frequency. Now back in the day, higher sample rates could potentially sound better, but this was largely because of the filtering that was required to make the analog to digital conversion work properly. These days, with improved technology and techniques, that filtering isn't as much of an issue, and it's become largely a matter of opinion whether higher sample rates on their own make an audible difference or not. But there is one other area where higher sample rates can make an audible difference, and that's with certain plugins and digital processing. Now let's talk about bit depth. Bit depth is a term used in binary mathematics, which is the language of computers and digital audio. A bit is a container that can store either a one or a zero. By stringing multiple bits together, through the magic of binary math, we can represent any number that we want. Each bit we add doubles the values that can be represented. So one bit can represent two values, one or zero. Two bits can represent four values covering zero, one, two, and three. 3 bits can represent 8 values, 0 through 7, 4 bits can represent 16 values, 0 through 15, and so on. In digital audio, bit depth translates to the resolution of the measurements we can take for each sample. You can sort of think of it like a ruler. 
If you had a ruler marked in one inch increments, you could only make measurements to the closest inch. But if your ruler has eighth inch, sixteenth inch, or thirty second inch increments, you can make much finer measurements. Now this isn't really an accurate metaphor for how bit depth works, but hopefully it helps to get the idea across of how resolution works with these measurements. So as I mentioned, a three bit system could represent eight values, and that's not really enough to accurately measure or sample digital audio. Early digital systems had eight bit resolution, so they could represent 256 values. Later, systems moved to 12-bit and could represent 4,096 values. When Compact Disc came out, it had 16-bit resolution, allowing for 65,536 values for measuring the audio. 20-bit systems upped this to 1,048,576 values. A 24-bit system, like many we have today, can represent 16,777,216 values. So what does this mean for us? Bit depth and the resolution it provides translates to dynamic range in the audio. You can think of it as each bit added increases the theoretical maximum dynamic range by 6 decibels. So a 16-bit system has a theoretical maximum dynamic range of 96 dB. Far greater than the dynamic range allowed for by the analog recording formats that preceded it, such as vinyls and cassettes. A 24-bit system has a dynamic range of 144 dB, while a 32-bit system could take us as high as 192 dB of dynamic range. Now, as of the time of this video, the limiting factor for digital audio performance is the hardware used for analog to digital conversion, with the best 24-bit converters topping out somewhere in the range of the high 120 dBs. But the good news is, this roughly equates to the limits of our human hearing. And with the bit depths we have available now, we have plenty of resolution for accurately measuring samples of audio even with very low-level signals, which was a problem with earlier lower resolution systems. A newer thing we've seen is that some manufacturers are now combining multiple analog to digital converters together on the same signal, with each converter measuring a certain part of the dynamic range. By combining these ranges from the converters together, you can get an even wider dynamic range. This is called dynamic range extension. It's very cool. Where bit depth is also important is with the internal math that computers perform when processing and combining digital audio. In this case, higher bit depth gives us greater precision for math rounding errors and more. So for internal processing, we now commonly see bit depths as high as 64-bit precision. So that's sort of a basic look at bit depth and sample rate. There's so much more we can dig into with this topic, including floating point math, one-bit systems, quantization error, dither, oversampling, noise shaping, and how the whole thing really works from a mathematical standpoint. But all of that's beyond the scope of this video. Ultimately, what matters is understanding the concepts behind sample rate and bit depth and what they truly affect in audio capture, processing, and playback. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about music and audio concepts like this, visit the news and research page at sweetwater.com or check out the other videos in our Glossary Terms playlist.